The President, please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous The court asseoir. is now back in session. La cour reprend Before son we audience. proceed to the Avant de co prosecutor, the chamber au co -procureur. would like to note uh, the request for additional time to put documents during the first trial segment. The Chamber notes that the request le is appropriate, procès, but uh, the Chamber does not uh, rule on this uh, request sur cette yet, but uh, we wait until the Nous time allocated to the lead co-lawyers for the civil party le, already le temps proceeded uh, with their putting up documents conseil, before the Chamber. Yeah. Uh, se uh, avant de considérer les national de prosecutor, uh, national you may Monsieur le Thank you, Mr. President. Procureur, national co-prosecutor says. Le co I will proceed uh, Je vais donc with the remainder of the documents to be put uh, before the chamber. Kyo Sampan's statement I have presented thus far contain numerous references to the traitorous clique of officials of the Khmer Republic. Uh, the CPK uh, policy against this individual was individus. crystallized of course, uh, at the second national congress bien of sûr, Cambodia, which was held on the 24th to the 25th of February 1975. Kyo Sampan presided over the la congress. Du congrès. A communique un communiqué issued by the Congress, le Congress signed by Kyo Sampan, declared it absolutely necessary to kill the seven traitors. De tuer les sept traitres. I do not propose Je ne me to read the statement as it has already been discussed in the court, including cour, by the Office of the co prosecutors par, on the 19th of January 2012, and by et Judge par le juge Lavergne last la semaine week. Dernière. I would like to Je note for the record the different documents on the case file which report the issuance of this statement rapport by the Fung de cette déclaration émise par le Congrès du Fung. Ces différents documents sont les suivants. FBIS extract, extract dated 27 of February 1975, D108 for this three, stroke one. E3 stroke e 117 at English E and RN 0016 rather 72 through 75. Khmer E or an 024 and French ERN 0028 A New York Times article dated New York the 3rd Times of March 1975 D56 D56 D O C Doc point dot zero one seven Khmer E or an zero zero six five six five five one English E or an zero zero one two two one zero two French E or an zero zero six six two 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 three 
a communique to the UN General Assembly à l'Assemblée générale des Nations Unies et maintenant du ministère des Affaires étrangères du Grunk daté du 21 1975 D108-43-3 Donc c'est un des documents qui a été discuté par le juge Lavergne la semaine la semaine passée An article by the article Pao du journal newspaper Pao, dated 6 of March 1975, D108-43-2, a media article Un from article de presse agents from France France Press, Republished in FBIS in brackets, E3 stroke 120 at ERN in English, 00166816. And finally, enfin, in the same FBI as report, D262.4, in brackets, E3 strokes 120 at E.O.N. in English, 0016-6874-1. Seven zero zero two five three French E R N zero zero seven zero zero two two nine a broadcast of a press communique read by Q Song Pan on the twenty fifth of March 1975, which states that the existence of the seven traitors must be ended at all costs. Returning now to Kyo Sampan's public statements, I would like to take you to an extract from the March 1975 FBI report document D262.4 in Address to monks, countrymen, and foreign residents in Phnom Penh and other cities. It is found at English ERN 016682628. Khmer ERN 0070 and French ERN 0070 Again, Ce this document, document demonstrates, nouveau, among other things, Kills some pawns details knowledge la connaissance of the situation on the battlefield in various parts les of the country. De dans les différentes parties du pays. This document Ce shows that Kyosom Pon used this appeal que to call on the residents of the capital to rise up and join the Khmer Rouge forces in overthrowing the Khmer Republic regime. De la Khmer. Like some of the previous statements Comme I have read, this appeal also gives an insight into the intentions uh, of the CPK un, un once the city falls, Kyosom Pond states, Que la Without the Mekong, money, troops, rice, le Mekong, and outside assistance, and with only a trickle of aid, the traitors are being drained of all blood. Exsangue. The traitors are well aware that their fate has come to fin. its end. The U.S. imperialists, their masters, see it. 
The world le monde also entier le voit également. Foreign le personnel des ambassades étrangères, plusieurs organisations étrangères, les journalistes étrangers et les habitants étrangers have been ont commencé à évacuer Phnom Penh. Tens of thousands of well-to-do residents have also fled Phnom Penh. The enemy situation is thus entirely desperate and top quality. In the final days of the civil war, Kyo Sampon issued additional messages to the residents of the city as well as the forces of the Khmer Republic. These messages are contained in April 1975 FBI's S report, document D262.5, E3-118. Kyo Sampon's statement of the 2nd of April 1975 can be found at English ER at 0016-6897, my ER and French ERN 0070026. A final appeal issued prior to the fall of Phnom Penh is dated the 13th of April 1975 and can be found in the same document at English ERN 0016-6948, my ERN. 0070-0276 and French Eon 0070-0260. Mr. President, uh, before le, I hand le over le to le my colleague, parole, I would like uh, to make uh, some observations with regard to the documents that the Chamber put uh, before the Chamber. Que nous that avons soumis à la chambre. There are of importance as Visant they described que the activities, public activities performed by Kyo Sampon in his capacity as the senior leader of uh, the Communist Party of Kampuchea and also the Grung and Fung government. May we uh, request that the documents be put before this chamber and thank you for your giving me the opportunity to put the documents. The President, thank you. Uh, now we would like to proceed to the International Co-Procureur. Thank you, Mr. President. And I note um, that your decision on, on um, time uh, allocations is pending, uh, but I will try and be uh, as brief as I can on each document. Um, I, I propose to deal with uh, 10 different records, one of which is a, a video file. Um, and I think, just given the time, that um, my presentation will not uh, be concluded today, and I will continue tomorrow morning with your, with your leave. Um, the first document uh, that I would like to uh, briefly discuss uh, is a book published by Kyu Sampan. Uh, it is called uh, Kyu, uh, Cambodia's Recent History and Reasons for the Decisions that I Made. Uh, it is E3-18. It has been, um, uh, put, been put before the chamber by the owners. Um, the original document number was Introductory Submission 4.23. This book is relevant, obviously, uh, because it deals with numerous matters. Uh, it has been referred to in court, uh, so we will only take you to uh, particular passages that we think are relevant both for the purposes of the Chamber and the public more broadly. Um, it deals with Q. Sampan's life uh, in the pre-75 period. It also deals with the 75 to 79 period, as well as uh, to a lesser extent. Uh, uh, events following the 1979 period or the DK period. Uh, um, 
First, I would like to take you, and I should note that the pre-75 period is, is dealt with in chapters 1 to 6. I would first like to take you to a passage uh, which appears at Khmer ERN 0010320, uh, English ERN 0010733, and French ERN 0039-5395. This passage uh, deals with the uh, flight by Q Sampan from Phnom Penh. Um, I'm showing the Khmer versions where available for the, for the benefit of counsel and, and the accused. And I will, rather than read the entire passages, um, I'll leave that to all the parties. And I might just read um, segments that, that we consider particularly relevant. Um, so in relation to the departure, Q Sampan indicates that he had received a proposal by way of a letter, which included, in his words, a detailed analysis of the situation, leaving no room for doubt as to who sent it. It doesn't describe who the author is, but describes the letter. He says, the messenger who delivered the letter was well known to both of us. This is to Kyu Sampan and uh, his friend Lu Yun. And uh, I continue to quote, he was a man respected for his age and his comportment. He often attended meetings organized by the Association of Former Students of Sisolith High School, a group to which we also belonged. And so this was the person who had made contact with Kyu Sampan and delivered the letter in response to which, uh, according to the book, he and Hu Yun fled Phnom Penh um, and, and uh, then found themselves under the protection of the Khmer Rouge. Um, I should, for, for the sake of completeness, I should indicate in this passage he also indicates that he left Phnom Penh in early 1967 because he was forced to do so and it was not his decision to leave his parliamentary duties and join the revolution. Um, moving on to another passage, um, which is an insight into uh, Kyu Sampan's observations in this period of the movement he had joined, uh, or whose protection he had sought and, and uh, attained. This is at Khmer ERN 0010382. French ERN 00395402 and English ERN 00103737. And I should note, I'm giving uh, only the starting ERNs in some cases in these, um, these passages along the page. Um, at this, uh, at this passage, Q Sampan reflects on what he saw in 1967 when he uh, was in the southwest zone under the protection of Tamok. And he says, so this is the gist of what I saw, what I heard, and how I felt when I was first introduced to the Khmer Rouge movement. It is sad, but also exhilarating. And then a little bit further down, I was excited because I was seeing a new force, a real national force, taking root in the hearts of the farmers living in the countryside, at a time when there were signs that our country was headed for disaster. Moving on to yet another passage, um, and this is a, uh, a caption uh, that is found below a photograph. This is at ERN, uh, in Khmer ERN 00103825. French ERN 00395404 and English ERN 00103738. The reason we show this is because it is a sort of reflection by Mr. Kyu Sampan as to perhaps the conundrum he, he seems to be facing or dealing with of uh, what one might do when there's a clash between human rights and the sovereignty of his or her nation. And I'll read uh, again the passage is on the screen, I will read a part of it, and he says, can one be true to the principles of respect for human rights and defense of one's homeland at the same time when it, when it happens that the two principles contradict each other? At the end of that passage, he says, I still profoundly agree with my orientation of life that the defense of one's country's independence and sovereignty is always and ever legitimate and necessary. The reason we read this passage, Your Honor, because in our submission, it relates to Kyu Sampan's attitude, perhaps, to resolving what he sees as a conflict between his country's sovereignty and respect for human rights. I will note uh, in passing that at Khmer ERN 00103826, French ERN 00395406, and English ERN 00003739, Q Sampan describes 
an attack uh, which took place in Trapan Prolong district, uh, which he was uh, invited to, uh, to attend and witness. This was an attack, uh, by his account, by Khmer Rouge forces on a Khmer Republic garrison. Uh, and he describes at, that, at those ERNs his um, ability to view that attack and, and his happiness at what he was witnessing. Um, uh, I will also just briefly note, uh, for this period, 1968, 1969, of course, your honours have heard evidence already uh, of the um, uprising, which, which uh, the evidence indicates the Khmer Rouge had commenced at that stage. Um, uh, Q. Pan describes the situation in which that uprising took place in, some, in more detail. Um, at Khmer ERN 001 French ERN 00395408, and English ERN 00103741. Uh, and, and, and those sections, as I say, as I indicated, continue uh, to describe the uprising, the conditions in which the uprising took place. Um, and lastly, they also describe Q. Uh, San Pan's move to Mount Oral in 1969 uh, with Hu Yun and Hu Nim. Um, where he uh, essentially, I believe, was stationed um, at Tarmok's headquarters for the southwest zone. The next significant event which Q. Sampan describes is his meeting with Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia um, in 1970. And this is found at the Khmer ERN 0010830, French ERN 0039541. And English ERN 0010374242. Uh, if we could show that on the screen, I don't propose to read the entire uh, passage in the interest of time, uh, other than to indicate that um, he describes uh, being taken to a meeting point uh, by Tamo uh, and also being accompanied by Huyun Hunim and another individual um, to a point where they met uh, Nun Chia and Pol Pot. What I wish to um, highlight here is that the words, at least in English, are, this is where we met Salot Sa and Nguyen Chia for the first time. And I'll just make a brief pause here. This meeting, uh, according to Q. Uh, Sampan's OCIJ interview, took place in September 1970. Uh, that is several months after the March uh, 1970 appeal that was issued by uh, then Prince Norodom Sihanouk. Um, in which, uh, again, according to Q. Sampan's own statements, was issued following consultations between uh, Pol Pot um, and the then Prince. And those consultations, of course, took, took place via um, an intermediary. The, the Premier of, of China, Mr. Zhu Enlai at the time. Uh, the reason I, I, I make this point is because Qi Sampan suggests he met uh, Salaf Sa Pol Pot for the first time in late 1970, and yet several months earlier, of course, um, the appeal had been issued, and, he, and it had been issued um, in part with his uh, name attached to it on behalf of the resi resistance in the country. The next uh, passage is at Khmer ERN 00103832, French ERN 00395417, and English ERN 00103745. And in this passage, Hugh Sampan elaborates on an open letter which he had, which he had published, uh, addressing and, and which he had addressed to the people of Cambodia. Um, this is found in chapter six of the book, uh, which, is, which is entitled, Why did I agree to represent the resistance inside the country? And he says, and I quote, I wrote that the CPK appeared as the only valid source, force to lead the struggle in the field. By valid force, I mean independent force, one that fights for the sovereignty of our country without depending on some foreign force for assistance. And a little bit further down, he says, from that point of view, I was dictated by my conscience. And we submit that's relevant 
uh, for the purposes of uh, considering uh, the reasons that Kiss Sampan joined the Khmer Rouge movement and agreed to be one of the leaders. The next uh, event to which I wish to take your honours, which is dealt with in the books, is the 1971 Congress uh, of the CPK, which Kiss Sampan indicates he attended. I shall slow down. This is found at Khmer ERN. 001-03869, French ERN 00395478, and English ERN 001-03775. This is in Chapter 11, uh, which is entitled Reflection on the Khmer Rouge Movement Based on My Experience. These are accused reflection, reflections on the regime that he had joined. Uh, and he indicates that uh, this uh, Congress in the middle of 1971 was held, uh, this was the first Congress since 1960, and it was held in the North Zone, which was then controlled by the Khmer Rouge. Um, and what is of interest here, if we can just have that on the screen very briefly, um, is a quote of a speech by Pol Pot uh, given at that uh, at that meeting, where Pol Pot is uh, quoted by Q. Sampan to have said, the weakness of the working class in Cambodia does not mean that there are no class distinctions or class struggles in our country. Pol Pot then goes on to, to uh, elaborate on that, on that class struggle. But we will move on to another passage which illustrates, in our view, what this struggle was all about. That next passage is at Khmer ERN 00103870, French ERN 00395479, and English ERN 00103776. And in this uh, part, which is of particular interest, uh, Q. Sampan develops, develops a theme of a contradiction or struggle between the cities and the countryside. And he also makes reference to the use of uh, the so-called defense units by the Khmer Rouge. In our submission, this uh, evidences Q. Sampan's contemporaneous knowledge uh, of these events. And, and, uh, and that will become apparent from the passage I will read. He says that following the 1971 Congress, and I quote now, I learned from various internal party documents and from the stories of various zone or region leaders that the daily social conflicts in the cities as well as in the countryside, though seemingly minor, were actually breeding grounds for the CPK to train leaders to work in various types of mass organizations. But the movement soon revealed itself to be far more vulnerable in the cities than in the countryside. And then he goes on to say, according to the documents he read, quote, the enemy's repression machine is more sophisticated there, where workers are often tarnished by capitalism, whereas the countryside is wider and more protected from it. In the same passage, he goes on to describe the, the shaping of the first self-defense units by the Khmer Rouge. And he says, in some regions, the local authorities seek Secret agents who were caught spying on important party meetings were sometimes tied up and physically eliminated. One remembers the role played by these self-defense units in the 1968 capture of weapons from Lon Nol's depots and in the guerrilla war that followed. And you will know, recall that earlier I described a, an attack on such a depot which Ki San Han, by his own account, witnessed in 1968. Uh, another theme which Ki San Pan deals with is the relationship or conflict, as he describes it, between the cadre, CPK cadre, who had spent time in Hanoi uh, and the CPK cadre who had been stationed in Cambodia throughout this period. This is at Khmer ERN 00103870, French ERN 00395481, and English ERN 00103776. Now, I want to be fair to the accused here. And I want to indicate that there is a discrepancy between the English and French versions on the one side, on the one hand, and the Khmer versions on the other hand, uh, in this passage. So I'm going to read from an English uh, passage, but um, where, as I said, I wish to indicate that there is some discrepancy with the Khmer language, um, and, and perhaps we will try and clarify that in the days to come. 
Donc, um, de, what, uh, what Mr. Kusampan says ce, here ce dit, is, Kusampan, and I quote, another point merits mention. Point Very de, early de, after the 1970 coup, coup a rivalry developed between military leaders from the 1968 to 70 armed battle on the one side and from Vietnam on the other. And then he goes on to say, from my position, I did not notice any systematic elimination. In the rare cases I heard about in informal conversations, I thought the offending parties were simply put aside or sent to the villages to, quote, learn closer to the people, such as what happened during those years to members of the Khmer National Union Front who had recently returned from Beijing. The reason I make reference to this uh, passage is because other evidence on the case file uh, indicates that um, re returnees from Hanoi, the Khmer Rouge cadre who had returned from Hanoi, were in many cases executed by the CPK. Uh, and just one uh, such uh, item is, is uh, Philip Short's book, which is based on interviews with uh, CPK cadre, uh, and this is at ERN 0039642560. Now, uh, another theme which Q Sampan deals with in this book, and the final theme that I will deal with just um, as, as uh, I'm going through the book, is the use of cooperatives in the zones controlled by the Khmer Rouge uh, in the period prior to 1975. Uh, at the same ERNs I quoted earlier, for the last passage, Q Sampan continues, quote, finally, the decision to form peasant cooperatives in liberated zones at the end of 1971 and in early 1970 long before the Khmer Rouge's victory, also greatly affected the movement. He goes on to say, these cooperatives were deemed critical. Indeed, while giving the, the Khmer Rouge leadership control over the economy, in particular, the production of rice, these cooperatives were also an indispensable source of power. Independent from the Vietnamese communists, they could be easily mobilized after the Vietnam War spilled over the Cambodian border. Without such measures, the Khmer Rouge destiny would have forever Forever being linked to the events inside Vietnam. And this is again Q Sampan discussing cooperatives some four years uh, prior to the um, April 1975 events. Uh, he then goes on to describe an accelerated use of cooperatives throughout the country. This is at Khmer ERN 00103872, French ERN 00395484, and English ERN double. 0103778. Um, I should, again, to be fair to the accused, he described him, describes himself as a fellow traveler, not a man of the past. So, in his own words, he is not uh, giving this, uh, these accounts as someone who is a man of the party. Of course, we disagree strongly on this point, but I wish to be fair to him. And I'll quote one passage here. It is essential to remember that the movement's independence vis-à-vis -vis the North Vietnamese and the United States, who were both fighting on Cambodian soil, was based on agricultural collectivization at the end of 1971 and in early 1972, and on the grain requisitioning measures throughout the so-called, quote, high-level cooperatives in regions under the regime's control. Pol Pot saw in this a mechanism to mobilize all forces, human, economic, and ideological, to end the war. Again, uh, we consider this highly probative because it indicates the pervasive uh, use of cooperatives throughout the uh, areas controlled by the Khmer Rouge, of course, at a time where Q uh, Sampan, in our submission, was uh, one of the leaders of the movement. Um, I will now take you to another document, um, and uh, I will spare you long passages now. This is just a brief uh, passing reference. Um, this is a New York Times article. Um, it is dated the 9th of July, 1982. And the document number here is D56-DOC-252. At 
Khmer ERN 00651187. Le French ERN 00652450. Et en français, 00 English ERN. Double zero one triple two eight zero. In English, zero zero one. Kusampan is reported to have said, to have indicated that he had indeed taken part in the decision to evacuate Phnom Penh. And I will quote. And he acknowledged that millions of Cambodians had been sent out of Phnom Penh and into the countryside as a result of, of quote, a collective decision. Had he joined in the decision? Question mark. À la question. Mr. Q. Sampan chuckled dryly Monsieur and replied in French, in French yes, en evidently. Oui, évidemment. Uh, I don't think this document requires any comment in particular, so I'll move on to the next one, which is um, document Number E3 slash 116, it has been put before your honours. Uh, this is a uh, document dated the 9th of sept September 1972, uh, and it ties in with uh, the submissions of, of my colleague earlier. This is another appeal by Q. Sampan, but now issued three years earlier to the appeals that my colleague was quoting from. Um, and this appeal in our submission is relevant because it demonstrates that Q. Sampan's uh, public uh, responsibilities as a Minister of Defence uh, at that time, and also his knowledge of the dire humanitarian situation in Phnom Penh la as early as 1972, and I'll quote briefly Je uh, here, briefly. this is uh, Khmer ERN 00003067, 000 French ERN 00485505, 05. and English ERN 00485282. Uh, and perhaps we can have that document on the screen. We're just waiting on the AV unit. I'm going to read a part of that passage. It says, our Khmer people's national liberation armed forces are intensifying attacks against all targets, especially along the strategic route numbers 1, 2 and 5. Our forces are besieging, besieging Phnom Penh and isolating the city from other places, causing the enemy's last stronghold in a panic stricken state. Therefore, they are severely defeated donc, militarily. Worse than this, défaits, mais their stocked pire, rice is not available now. Ils pas accès Concerning the rice issue, I would du like riz, to inform monks, public moines, servants, soldiers and civilians et et that it is obvious that there is no single grain of rice now and in the future. Et à Q. Sampan describing the situation in Phnom Penh in 1972. Uh, I won't read any more from that document. Uh, it is there for uh, your honours and for the parties to, to, to look at, but for the benefit of the public, I'll just indicate it ends with an appeal to monks and others living under the Khmer Republic regime to attack rice and food warehouses. Um, and, uh, to um, use their solidarity um, with the Khmer Rouge, and it closes, et and I'll just read the last sentence, please monks and new my patriots, rise up suivante, to smash the enemy. Bons et compatriotes, levez -vous et attaquez um, les ennemis. Another document from the same period, uh, uh, this time January 19, it appears to be a January 1973 document, document and perhaps my colleague can just show the first page of this, of this publication. It is not dated as far as we can ascertain, but the text of the document, of the document seems to indicate that it was uh, published in or around mid-January 1973. We could just show that first page. Um, this was issued at a time of, of uh, peace negotiations between the United States and Vietnam, and, and, and the document uh, makes reference to it. It is a public statement issued by Q. Sampan together with, uh, in, in his uh, capacity, I should say, as the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defence of Grunk, and also by Mr. Hu Yun, who was Minister of Interior, and Mr. Hu Nim, who was ministry, uh, Minister of Propaganda and Information. Um, uh, in our submission, and your honours uh, will read the document, of course, um, 
it shows his detailed knowledge uh, of the battlefield situation. It goes into several pages, uh, detailed discussions of, of uh, military détail. victories by Khmer Rouge forces. It, in fact, boasts as to the smashing of enemy heads at various front lines, including National Etat Road 3, de National Road 5, around Phnom Penh, de, ou uh, around the Mekong, south of the autour, capital, uh, Phnom Penh, uh, and in the north at Mekong, Siem Reap and, 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 and nord, Kampong Tom. Siem Reap et Kampong Tom. At paragraph 7, paragraph this document boasts that by mid-January 1973, the Kampuchean People's Liberation Army de Liberation had du smashed a total of 10,000 245 heads of enemies and liberated dozens of bases, Mekong River, and tens of thousands of people. I'll give two specific examples of what we say is contemporaneous knowledge of the brutality of the Khmer Rouge forces by Kusampan. At Khmer ERN 042329, French ERN Double O seven five two one seven one en français zéro zéro quatre quatre trois deux neuf en français zéro zéro quatre quatre trois 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 quote from that document anymore, which we have limited for time, but again, I'll just note that it, 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 like the other documents, it boasts the cutting off of uh, supplies to Phnom Penh uh, by the Khmer Rouge forces. Uh, the next document uh, has in fact been discussed in court, um, so again in the interest of time, I'll be very brief. Uh, I believe Judge Laverne referred to this document towards the end of last week. It is entitled Nouvelle du Cambodge. Cambodge, it is an April 1974 issue uh, by the Kampuchea Information Agency. This is document number 12, uh, introductory submission 12.7. It basically reports the activities of a delegation uh, led by Kisantan, uh, a delegation which included uh, Ying Sari, who was then described as a special advisor to the vice presidency of the world government, and Ying Tirith, who was described as minister for the people's education and youth. Um, because the document has been discussed uh, and in accordance with your honours um, instructions, I, I won't read from it. Uh, I will simply indicate pas. two uh, particular places that we consider relevant. Uh, je vous um, je vous uh, les pages que nous the document first includes a joint statement issued by the Korean hosts and the Cambodian visitors. Les um, and Cambodian. an excerpt that we are particularly Un interested in qui nous is at Khmer ERN 00596125, French ERN S00011112. An English ERN 00020576. This again indicates uh, knowledge of violent attacks on Phnom Penh and a few remaining uh, strongholds donc une forte uh, of the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, this document also plutôt, includes a speech by Kisampan, um, which I think uh, Judge Laverne quoted from last week, referred to last week, last week discusses the, um, uh, as the Khmer Rouge described it, liberation of Udong in March 1974. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 00596141. French ERN S00012 um, and English ERN 00280586. Reason we make reference to this in particular is because the other evidence on the case file indicates that extensive crimes were committed during the Khmer Rouge attack on Udong. Again, uh, other evidence on the case file describes the events there, including uh, cadres uh, interviewed by Philip Short, uh, one of whom will testify before your honours. Um, and in Philip Short's book, this is that, those events are described as at 00396455 and 00. 
Those passages are only available in English at the moment. Long book in, uh, we will try and uh, obtain translations in the relevant portions. Traduit par Jean Lafitte, le Président. Le Président, 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 le Monsieur le procureur, pourriez-vous ralentir votre débit Car les, uh, les interprètes n'ont pas été en mesure de. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. I apologize to everyone in the courtroom and interpreters in particular. Je regrette à tout le monde. Um, et je présente mes excuses à tout le monde ainsi qu'aux interprètes. Those dit le procureur. ERNs je vais répéter les from ERNs. Philip Short's book Donc, were double zero three nine six four five five. Zero zero and double zero three nine six four six five. Uh, I'll move on to another document. This is not document number six uh, that, I'm, that I'm presenting today. Um, it is an interview of Q Sampan by uh, two individuals, Meng Trai Ia and Sopiak Long. Long. This is on the case file E3-108, has been put before your honours. Um, um, and this is, uh, we submit this document is highly probative. It contains comments by Q Sampan about numerous uh, aspects of CPK policy prior to 1975. It deals with the reasons for the evacuation uh, and it deals with the functioning of the standing in the Central Committee among other matters. Uh, I should say this also uh, contains an interview of Nunchia by the same authors. Um, again, I wish to be uh, very clear. Um, there are sometimes issues with uh, translation of passages. Um, we have requested a correction uh, or a review by the translation unit of one page of this document in Khmer. The English is the original. Um, so I will, I will quote from the English version, and that's the version we will show on the screen. Uh, and the correction in Khmer should hopefully come through uh, very soon. It only relates to one brief passage. Otherwise, we can identify any major errors. Um, at Khmer ERN 0347 French ERN 0061302 and English ERN 0000026. Q Sampan deals with the uh, return to Cambodia uh, du retour by Pol Pot in 1953. Pot en uh, this was at a time when Kyu Sampan had gone to France où, uh, to undertake Pot further studies, and at the same time, France, Pol Pot had returned to Cambodia, Pot to, Cambodia uh, to uh, essentially, uh, according to this account, qui, um, um, investigate uh, or look into the various Pot, uh, resistance movements qui and report back to the Student Resistance Association and who they should join their forces with as it were. Qui il um, and I mention this simply because in our submission it, it indicates uh, Q Sampan's early knowledge of who, Q, of who uh, Pol Pot Q was and what he was doing. Tôt, uh, and Pol I will just note that earlier when I was quoting from uh, Q Sampan's book, cité uh, he had indicated de there that he met uh, Pol Pot for the first time um, uh, in 1970. This, this, of course, uh, in our submission, uh, is inconsistent with other evidence on the case file, which indicates that he was well aware of vis -vis Pol Pot's role in the, in the Communist Party, um, as I say, as early as 1953. I will read from that passage very briefly. At that time, Sal Sar, me and others were students in France. I went to France in 1953. Sal Sar was assigned to come to make a judgment which group should the students involve. Sal Sar came and decided to involve the Khmer Vietnam movement, supported by Vietnam. We decided to join Salazar to support the Vietnamese movement fighting against France. Uh, again, another passage in the same interview um, deals with the, uh, the theme of cooperatives, again, prior to 1975. Um, and what's interesting here is that Q Sampan indicates that one of the reasons that the population of Phnom Penh had swelled to 3 million 
was because uh, there were escaping, escaping, escaping Khmer Rouge cooperatives. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 00347 French ERN 00613203 English ERN 00009928 Kusampan says, and I quote, In 1975, there were as many as 3 million people lived in Phnom Penh. These people Tous moved ces first to escape the U.S. bombings and cooperatives in the Khmer Rouge les controlled dans les areas. Qui par les Khmer Rouges. But why there were cooperatives, Cependant, he asks, les coopératives ont été, and goes on to say, it was because at that Ensuite, time the Vietnamese effet, tried to buy rice from the Lon Nol government and later Cambodian people. Au régime de Lon Nol et au Cambodian. Then we started to create cooperatives to make sure that cooperatives everybody had enough rice to eat. Manger. On the same page, if we could show that Et page on the screen, page, uh, Q. Sampan was asked on a à Q. Sampan whether there were any CIA spies si in Cambodia in this period, pre-75. And au he Cambodge. answers, Il répond, CIA were everywhere la during CIA the war. Se partout, partout According to les the World Health guerre, Organization, there were 15,000 people 15, died, died of starvation de five months before April 17, 1975. What would you do? If you were there, que vous auriez pu faire si vous aviez été there were meetings in the standing committee to deal with these de problems. The reason this is probative in our opinion, in our submission, is because it indicates nous, that discussions il a, il a took place, of course, prior to the evacuation of Phnom Penh to deal with the problem of the city's population. The city's population ont eu lieu avant l'évacuation de Phnom Penh pour gérer la question de la population. I should indicate that in the same interview, uh, Q. Sampan, uh, uh, names the members of the standing committee uh, of du the committee CPK du PCK. to include Pol Pot as secretary, Pol Pot comme secrétaire, Nunchia, Nunchia Nunchia as deputy secretary, secretary Ying Sari as a member, membre, uh, uh, Son, Sen, Son Sen, Tamok, Tamok, Tamok Vonvet, 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 and Sao Pim. Et Sao Pim. And at Khmer ERN 00347037, French ERN 00613204, and English ERN 00009929, after identifying those members of the standing committee, he is asked, is Von Vett still alive? He responds, he was arrested because he also was one of the Viet Minh bodies hidden in the Communist Party of Cambodia. Similarly, Sao Pim was also arrested for the same reason. One last reference in that document, that Khmer ERN 0347039, French ERN 00613205 and English ERN 00009929. Hugh Sampan canvasses, according to the interview, the concept uh, or need for radical policies. And he says, I completely agree that at that time we had committed mistakes. Je suis tout à fait pour dire que at the same time, nous avons des we also did many good things for de our même, nation. Aussi fait de so it is fair to talk both good donc, and juste bad. Stop talking en mal, du only about the killings, de ne which is only one des... side of the coin. If you want your country to gain independence and free, si vous voulez you have to dedicate something for your nation. Liberté, il faut People may not chose à la have so much freedom. Les gens Political leaders have to practice radical policy. Les leaders politiques and I'll leave this document there. The next set of documents, voilà uh, number seven on my list, uh, uh, from which I will not quote, but to which I will simply refer, pas, are a series of interviews with um, uh, an individual called Sam Borin. And these documents Boring. are found on at D297. Through to D297.15. Uh, these are relevant simply because, again, they deal with Q. Sampan's life prior to 1975. I do wish to note that we also have a more complete version of these interviews, um, and we submitted them with our uh, document list uh, both in April and in July. This document uh, hasn't been 
allocated a number just as yet Ce by the chamber, reçu de numéro E3. but it is document number 207 in Annex 1 207 of our April 1 and July lists. The July list is E109-4.1, and there are a number of annexes to that list. The next document uh, oui. which et I wish to deal with, and I will juillet, provide perhaps two quotes e or three in the time that is remaining, and then uh, perhaps I can resume in the morning, is Q. Sampan's, again, another book by Q. Sampan, uh, entitled Considerations on the History of Cambodia from the Early Stage to the Period of Democratic Cambodia. This is, uh, has been placed before your honours. It is E3-16. It is a very long document. Uh, we consider Chapter 5 in particular to be extremely relevant because it deals with the uh, development of the CPK and their policies with the various individuals and their roles in the pre-75 period. Um, perhaps by way of introducing this document, uh, I should read from the very opening lines of Chapter 5, where Kusampan says, However, we should also ponder whether a revolution like the Khmer Rouge revolution that had once broken the greedy ambitions of major and intermediate great powers could have been an act committed by a single person or a small group of people. That certainly could not be true. Many tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people followed this revolution, and they did not hesitate to sacrifice their lives for the revolution. The reason we say this is important is because it reflects Hugh Sampan's views on the Khmer Rouge movement and also on the concept that, of course, uh, it was a collective movement. It was not ruled by one person, et pas or par in Kyusan Pan's words, a small group uh, of comme people. Pan, un petit group At um, another passage which uh, I wish to refer to briefly, Kyusan Pan discusses the use of criticism and self-criticism, which is, of course, a hallmark de la uh, et de of, uh, of um, bien, CPK policy as early as late 1950s. This is at Khmer ERN 0038026262, French ERN 0064388331, and English ERN 0049822229. And Q. Sampan states the following. On the organizational side, Sur le plan organizational, the fundamental les units were the branches, les cellules, each of which had just three to six persons with iron discipline, et qui ont which une all de voluntarily que accepted, tout le monde a accepté, and which had to do constant Puis, criticism il faut faire un and self-criticism to strengthen and expand their proletarian stance. He then says in brackets, Puis, entre later, il écrit these plus words tard, were used to educate me too. I wish to use them at this time so that you can see the atmosphere inside the movement at that time. I will move on to another passage. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 0038 uh, 0267, French ERN 0064384. and Khmer ERN Sorry, I apologize. English ERN 0049823. Um, this is important in our submission because it deals with the party lines adopted at the very first Congress of the Communist uh, Party held in Phnom Penh, uh, as Q. Sampan indicates, between the 30th of September and the 2nd of October 1960. He points, uh, he highlights in particular a new line of the party adopted at that uh, Congress, du parti uh, lors de ce Congress under item D on that page, D, and he says, this line specified that the exploiting classes were the primary enemy 
était l'ennemi le plus important de la révolution du Cambodge et qu'elle était également l'instrument des impérialistes américains. De ce fait, la population Khmer devait anéantir le régime féodal par des moyens pacifiques ou par d'autres moyens encore. Madame, Messieurs les juges, je remarque qu'il est maintenant 16 heures. J'aurais besoin d'une dizaine de minutes document, pour terminer um, de parler de could, ce document. Uh, the next et je segment is, is, a, is a number of brief video clips. Uh, I can either finish this document now or in the morning, la suite. whichever you Je peux donc terminer maintenant prefer. ou terminer demain matin. Comme vous le souhaitez, je m'en remets à la chambre. The President, uh, having noted that uh, you would need 10 more minutes to proceed with the vous avez indiqué à la Chambre que vous avez besoin de 10 minutes additionnelles pour terminer la présentation de documents. Very grateful, Your Honour. I'm mindful that it's been a long day, um, so I will uh, complete uh, this document in the 10 minutes I have. Je sais que la journée est bien longue. Je terminerai um, donc de parler de ce document dans les 10 minutes. The next. Uh, section is of interest because it deals with the, uh, the stance of independence, mastery and self-reliance uh, in the very early period um, and the use of covert guard units to which I've already made reference in another document earlier. This is at Khmer ERN. 00380371, French ERN 00643836, and English ERN 00498233. Discussing those uh, en anglais, 0, units, 0, 9, 8, 2, uh, Q. Sampan says the dans following, discutant de ces unités quote, Q. Sampan any sub-district chief, any deputy clerk, any forestry chief, any fishery ministry officer that was the most vicious, they would arrest and kill. Tout commis de député, tout chef forestier ou tout ministre ou agent du ministère des euh, pêches qui étaient les plus vicieux et étaient arrêtés et tués. So Puis on indique que les pouvoirs organisés ont même organisé des gardes covertes qui utilisaient seulement des cartes, 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 To capture Plutôt, ils ont lutté pour se défendre contre les campagnes d'arrestation et ont aidé à se cacher les uns des autres de sorte que ceux qui avaient le pouvoir ne pouvaient pas les arrêter. Ils ont organisé des gardes clandestins qui n'utilisaient que des kramas, des fouets, des couteaux, des haches et des bâtons comme armes pour arrêter ceux qui osaient entrer dans les villages et essayer d'écouter les réunions, etc. Le 27 juin 1977, mais je vais passer à la question des gardes ou des unités de gardes secrets ou clandestins a déjà fait l'objet d'une référence dans le numéro des tendards révolutionnaires de décembre 1976 à janvier 1977. Je vais maintenant passer à la prochaine page. English ERN, uh, rather, I'll start with Khmer. Uh, the Khmer ERN 00380390, French 00643847. And English 00498243. This passage is of interest because it discusses a meeting conducted by Pol Pot at Office 100, um, which I believe was on the Vietnamese territory in 1966. Um, this was a meeting at which uh, a decision was made to prepare for armed struggle, uh, and uh, Q. Sampan summarizes the, these resolutions, uh, but importantly, uh, number three, he says, the most important decision of all was that each zone was to make ready to join in armed struggle. Uh, in our submission, the relevance of this, of course, is the centralized decision-making by the CPK highest uh, echelons, which then, of course, are implemented by uh, each zone, in the words of Kyosampan. Um, and last, uh, the last passage from this book, uh, to which I want to refer, um, it relates again to those events of March 1970 uh, following the coup d'etat um, and it revolves around the issuance of a public appeal by the then Prince Norodom Siem. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 00380421, French ERN 00643. 
0064 and English ERM 0049 8259. Uh, here, Q Sampan describes uh, the um, essentially communication between Norodom Sihanouk and Pol Pot with Zhu Enlai, as I mentioned earlier, acting as an intermediary. And Q Sampan confirms that in that communication, Pol Pot sent a letter of support to uh, the prince, which was signed in the name of Q Sampan, Hu Yun, and Hu Nim, all of whom most Cambodians assumed had died at the orders of Sihanouk three years earlier. Um, again, this is relevant in our submission because it forms part of the fact factual matrix as to just what was happening in early 1970 and how those communications uh, took place and how Kisampan was put forward as the leader of the resistance in the country. Um, lastly, I note that I have about three minutes left, um, and I will just use that time to refer to document number nine, from which I will not, not uh, quote, uh, because it is uh, the foil runners, you're well familiar with it, uh, but perhaps for the benefit of your audience, the uh, interview of Q Sampan by the co-investigating judges on 13th of December 2007, this is contained in document number E3-27, uh, again it is before your honours, um, I will just note the relevant ERNs and without actually reading any of this text, uh, Khmer ERN, 0156614, French ERN 0015666666 and 0015674343 for English. Um, it indicates, this, it, this passage essentially indicates that uh, Pol Pot uh, was at the headquarters west of Udon together with Pol Pot immediately prior to the, um, uh, the fall of Phnom Penh, and he indicates that Nguyen Chia may have also been there, as well as a number of regional commanders. Um, another uh, passage in the same document, another passage in the same document is at Khmer ERN 00156615, French ERN 00156667, and English ERN 00156745. The reason uh, I make reference to La this passage is because in response to a question uh, by Judge Yu Bun Lang, whether between 1970 and 1975 uh, he stayed permanently with the Khmer Rouge leaders, he says yes, because my role uh, was estab to establish the liaison with the king. In your honours, I'm grateful for the extra time. Uh, uh, with your leave, I will resume tomorrow. Uh, as I said, I have a, uh, a brief set of um, video extracts, which is not taking more than 20 minutes. Thank you. The President, thank you, International Court Prosecutor. The court proceedings today comes to an appropriate end. Tomorrow's session will be resumed by 9 o'clock. Security personnel are now instructed to bring all the accused persons to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom before 9 a.m. The court is adjourned. The de faire en sorte qu'ils soient présents à 9 heures demain matin. Et la séance est levée.